The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. So from the reading from 1 Corinthians 6, from 9 to 20, this is what he's trying to say. That the maker made us male and female. And the maker gave us the maker's instruction. That is a manual. If you bought a television, the manufacturer will give you the manual as to how to operate it and keep it safe. Two instructions. Number one, absolute chastity outside marriage. Number two, absolute fidelity in marriage. Two of the makers instruction. So far as our sex and our sexual life is concerned, absolute chastity outside marriage. Absolute fidelity in marriage. That is to say, that fornication is wrong, adultery is wrong. Fornication is wrong, adultery is wrong. See, Jesus even set higher standards so far as fornication and adultery is concerned. Let's listen to him in Matthew 5, 27, 28. Let's listen to Jesus our presiding elder. It was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully or at a man lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This is a tall order, but it is the safest place. He is trying to prevent us from going into the act. So that you are not stoned when you are in the act or when you are caught in the act. He's stopping it at the door, the mind. He's stopping it there. He several years before, his great grandfather, David, caught a woman bathing. Seeing a woman's naked body, just your eyes catching a naked body is, is not evil because he didn't design it. But you see, his problem was that. I like the key. I say so. Oshena, na nuhu ye nefe. Wan kase oshena nuhu ye nefe. What that means is that I think that because I wasn't there. Let me just make a guess, but I'm sure it is true. You see, he caught the woman bathing when he was slowly on top of the roof. That one, he should have said, Jesus. <laughs> or if he doesn't want Jesus that he say Yehovah and maybe that time it will be more contestual and then take that thing from his mind but Bible says Oshena what that means is that this man didn't just, just, just say Yehovah and went to sleep home. he entertained himself with the naked body it is Oshena until now the thing moved from the eyes to the mind and dropped in the heart and the heart is the workshop once anything gets there it must produce so when he called this woman and the woman said have a husband he will still not stop because now the thing is in the heart it has overwhelmed the mind and it has taken hold of the entire body and he forgot that he was a king. So Jesus said, let me help you so that you stop it at where it matters in the mind. You can't stop bears from flying over your head. But at least you can stop bears 
from making their nest on your head, you can do it. So Jesus is giving us a better solution to it. He says, stop it in the mind. So David said later on that, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, what I dwell on, be acceptable unto you, O Lord, because you are my strength and my redeemer. He now knows that his meditations, what he dwells on, should be acceptable. Otherwise, it will disturb him. So God has something to say concerning sex and sexual morality. Absolute chastity outside marriage. Absolute fidelity inside marriage. Fornication is wrong. Adultery is wrong. Jesus is advising that we close the door at the mind, the thought point. Four things about the standards of God. So far as sex and morality is concerned. The first is that God's standards are right for us. Second is that God's standards concerning sex and sexual morality is good for us. The third is that God's standards are difficult for us. Yet, the fourth, the standard of God concerning sex and morality they are possible for us to meet. They are possible for us to meet. Let me start with the standard of God. It's right for us. It is right for us because that is what God has chosen. That is what the word of God has said. When God created us, he gave us the word, his word, his standard, that it shall be our life. We will dwell in it. Deuteronomy 32 verse 47 says this. Deuteronomy 32 verse 47. They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. The standards of God concerning whatever is our life. If you're saying that don't do this, don't do that, this is your very life. It will help you in the way you live. It is the right thing for us. Why am I saying this? You see, all that God has said is settled in heaven already. It is settled in heaven already. The Bible says in Psalm 119 from verse 1, it says that blessed are those whose, whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Once you obey the standards of God, your ways will be blameless. Blessed are those who keep his statutes. The word statute and statue are of the same root. What that means is that the word of God is like a statue. It doesn't matter what happens. It is forever settled. So no generation changes it. That because it is right for us. You have laid down precepts. That is, precept is two words, pray and set. The original idea. And they are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that your ways may be steadfast in obeying your decrees. The word of God is a decree. And it is the right one for us. Now, let me just take this one and I'll move to the others. Because I've just, this one fuses into what I said already. Hebrews chapter 1 and then verse 3. This one I want us to read together. Hebrews 1 verse 3. The sun is a radiance of God's glory. There is that representation of his being. Sustaining all. How many things? How many things? How many things? By his powerful word. Now listen. When he created us and he put everything in place, what will sustain this earth is word. So when a group of people come gunning against the word of God, they are actually bedeviling the foundation that this earth is standing on. When you decide to obey what God has said, that one is what is going to sustain our life. It is the right thing for us. But the word of God is good for us. The standard of God is good for us. Let me look at the standard of God is good for us. Is good for us. Psalm 19. Psalm 19 from verse 7. 
The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. See, the law of the Lord, his standards are perfect. It revives souls. Verse 8. The precepts, that is the word of God, of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. It doesn't frustrate you. Today, there are certain people in this world who have changed their sex organs. Changed, they moved away. And then to the other side, which they were not, and now they are frustrated. They want to plant the original one. And you see, see the, the precepts of the Lord are right. It gives joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. It's good for us. The next verse, nine. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. Verse 10. They are more precious than gold, than much more pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than the honeycomb. Verse 11. And I want us to read together. This is the big one. By them is your servant warm. In keeping them is great reward. This reward is not just for God, it's for us. The standard of God is good for us. See, people think that God <laughs> wants to spoil our pleasure. Some years ago, we used to have this, I don't know whether he's still alive, A.B. Crenson. Is he still alive? Still alive. He sang a song like this. So, young couple, what is wrong? Or did they mean normal instructions? He sang it. So some people think that God is up there and he doesn't care about us. Don't do this, don't do that. What did you mean to all my instructions? And he's spoiling our joy. Let us enjoy ourselves. And listen, you see, God knows what is right for us. Yes, what did you mean all my instructions? He knows what is right for us. He doesn't want to spoil our happiness. In fact, he created this sex Sexuality to make us happy. But to everything in this time. So we must obey the maker's instruction. During the Russian Revolution, the Russians thought that they want to get away from everything West and God. So they advocated for free sex everywhere, anytime. Free love, free sex everywhere, anytime. See, after some two or three years, they had to repeal that law. Guess what happened? Let me just say that, let's say in our country, the government is saying that we are tired of these Christians and God, God, God. Free love, free sex, any place, anywhere, anytime. Close your eyes and imagine what will happen. Yeah, close your eyes. Yes, close your eyes and imagine what will happen. You see, imagine what will happen on earth. So they had to block that one, stop it, repeal it. And today, the such life in Russia is better than the West. It took atheist Russia those times to experiment to know that the standard of God is good for human beings. This is what happened. Homeless children, if you want to have free sex anytime, anywhere, because there will be nobody responsible for it anytime, anywhere. Divorce. Because you wouldn't know whose wife is this or who did it. Divorce, abortion, hatred, conflicts of all kinds. And you see the big one work slackened. But who is going to work? If it's free sex everywhere, anytime, anywhere, who is going to work? 
He took atheist Russia to experiment to know that the standard of God is good for us. But I agree that the standard of God for us is difficult because of the flesh. There is a temptation. We all feel we bend on the inside. But the Apostle Paul says that don't think that you're only the person who is burning. All of us are burning, so don't get consumed. Yeah. Everyone have this feeling. We are, we are emotional beings. So we are feeling towards the opposite sex. We have that. So it becomes difficult for us. But he has provided a solution. You see, the strongest person in the body, in the body, let me say, arguably in the body, because at the time he lived, there was no Mike Tyson. Maybe Mike Tyson could have flawed him, but I don't know. But I want to think that the strongest person, arguably, in Scripture is Samson. The strongest man in the mind, Solomon. The strongest man in worship, David, all fell through adultery. So in spite of their strength, this sex thing conquered them. Yeah. So it is difficult. Reuben, the firstborn of the patriarch Jacob, lost his position because of sexual immorality. I'm known. It is his case that always pains me. As for me, the only person he loved in the whole world was their own sister. And when the sister was telling him, this thing is not done in Israel because it has consumed him, he still raped the girl. Because the girl told her that if you do this, you become one of the fools in Israel. And I like the key. Ubeyo Ogegenche. Ogegenche is double kwasia. Yeah. Yeah. Ogegenche is not just a fool. Ogegenche is kwasia, kwasia, kwasia. Yeah. That is what it means. Because look at, look at the king. Our father is the king. And you are the firstborn. When our daddy is not there, you mount this great throne. The dynasty of the father was wide and great and big. And everybody knows that you are the, the throne. But if you do this and it is head, you will lose the throne. You will be like a double fool. Yet he will not stop. He did it and he lost it. What do we do? First Corinthians 6 verse 18. When it comes to sexual immorality because it can ruin you. Let's look at that. Proverbs 5 from 1. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen well to my words of insight. that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. Yes, can you move on still? For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter and girl, sharp as a double-edged sword. You see, you can enjoy and indulge in all this, but at the end, it is the end that we are talking about. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. Six. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths are crooked, but she knows it not. Now then, my son, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not, or far from him. Do not go near the door of her house or his house. Sometimes you must keep to a path far from certain people. Lest you give your best strength to others and your years to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feed on your wealth and your toil and reach another man's house. At the end of your life, you will groan. When your flesh and body are spent, that is what this immoral life will do to you. You will say how I hated discipline, how my heart spent corruption. 
I would not obey my teachers or listen to my instructors. I didn't obey them. I've come to the brink of utter ruin in the midst of the whole assembly. Verse 15. Can we read together? Drink water from your own system. Running water from your own well. You see, listening to me, we will continue. If you are married here, lift up your hands, let me see. Married couples, a lot of us. He says, drink water from your own well and your system. <laughs> it is important. <laughs> Verse 16. Should your springs overflow in the streets? Your streams of water in the public square? 17. Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. I pray that may your fountains be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. As you sit unmarried, you belong to one person. How wonderful this world would be if we held on to the, the statutes of God. Chapter 7, verse 27, Proverbs 7, 27. This one, I want the men to read this one. Men, are you here? Yeah. Read this one. Ready, go. You see, her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death, the house of the adulterer, the prostitute. You think that, you see, if you indulge in these things, it will captivate you. Then it will destroy your soul, invariably your very life, to lead you straight to the grave and to death. This grave is not just dying, but it is a grave of the soul. So what do we do? Be careful then. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says, flee sexual immorality. Flee. Just stick to your heels. Be careful the literature you read. Please be careful. The films and the videos you watch. Some of you are friends to pornography, please. Don't disturb your soul. It will destroy your soul and it will take you straight to the grave. The dresses you wear. You see, sometimes people think that we shouldn't say anything, but let us say it. All. Should I say it? Let me just show you, please, why we need to say this. The dresses you wear, how you carry yourself. There are certain people in this life who do not care how they dress. Don't follow them. See, they can dress with a very short knickers to this point. And then they walk at where the men are. See, and they shock everybody, but they themselves, they are not shocked. Yeah. Because they have moved to a certain realm. I'm telling you. You may think that that is nice, but listen to 2 Peter chapter 2. Verse 14. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14. This time, the ladies will read. This one, the ladies will have to read. And read it carefully. Oh. Don't just read it, but read it. Ready, go. There are a certain group of people, the Bible says their eyes are full of adultery. Their eyes. So don't say that it doesn't matter how short my dress is. It is their problem. Listen, if their eyes are full of adultery, so that then they move on. They never stop sinning. Once they pick you with their eyes, 
they will pursue you. And they seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed. They want this woman and that girl, that girl, that girl. And sometimes they brag about that. Listen to the celebrities, the boxers. Some of them pride themselves in how many girls they slept with in a year. Listen to them. I've heard several. I know you have also heard it. They pride themselves. Now listen. When a man sleeps with you sexually, the Bible's description of that is humiliation. The man has humiliated you. You can later on marry the president of Ghana. But so far as that man is concerned, you are nothing before him. He has humiliated you. So be precious. The man has humiliated you. And he said, you are going to have a wedding. And then you are there. Pim, 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 pim. When you see that man or that boy, you see how you feel. You see that your steps will not be that straight. Because you, 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 so far as he's concerned, according to scripture, you are nothing before him. He has humiliated you. But you see, the standard of God is still possible to meet. First Corinthians chapter 6. This is where the whole of chapter 6 from verse 9 is talking about. So let's read from verse 12. First Corinthians 6 from verse Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Verse 13, please. Food for the stomach and stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. You realize that the context of this chapter 6, apart from maybe from verse 12, is talking about sexual immorality. Let's jump to verse 15. Let's see what is in verse 15, please. Don't you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Uh, shall I then take my members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? So he's still talking in context of sex and morality. Then let's look at verse 16. What is there in verse 16? Don't you know that he who unites himself with a prostitute? So in the same context. But let's listen to verse 14. Or let's read verse 14. This one I want Apostle Lachu to help us to read. Please come. <laughs> he was my boss, he became my friend. <laughs> My boss who became my friend. And then his uncle was my area head. The only area head who is my friend is Apostle Barabu. Uh, when we meet, we can talk about anything. And I like him. He actually mentored me. So I want him to read this one. Verse 14. But he's now my chairman. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Verse 15. The next verse. verse 15, please. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. <laughs> Let's put our hands together for him. I wanted you to hear a better reading than mine. And now listen. Let's go back to verse 14. Is this about... Eschatology. 
I don't think so. Because the contest is not about Jesus' coming. So, but he says his power, by his power, God will raise the Lord from the dead. That power that raised God from the dead, that power can also raise you too. What does it mean? You sometimes the standard of God seems to be so high. So we think that God brings the standards down. He will not do that. Instead of he bringing the standard down, this scripture says that he will raise you up. To be able to meet the standard. He will raise you up to be able to meet the standard. So the standard of God can be met by us. But the same power that he raised Jesus from the dead. That same power is available for us to deal with sin and evil. This is what it means. This is not about the second coming. Not at all. The power can raise us to meet the standard of God. So the answer is not God, bring it down. Say, God, lift me up. Lift me up. Lord, lift me up. And let me stand by faith on every land, well adventure and light above. It's okay. Plant my feet on. support um, so God should lift us up but he has done the lifting already by the same power that he raised Christ but I'm praying that you will know it and nurture it he has given us two things the first one new nature new nature Ephesians 2 verse 10 says this Ephesians 2 10 for he has created us in Christ Jesus unto good works he has created us he has made us anew in Christ Jesus Ephesians 4 22 says that you you were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by the deceitful desires and to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness. So we have a new nature which is created to be like God. But Ezekiel 36 from 24, and I want to read that one up to 29. Ezekiel 36 from 24. Can we, after writing it, you can lift up your heads. I want you to pay attention to the screen. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. This is God wanting to deliver Israel. But it's applicable to us as well. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. That is redemption from evil. I will then, let's read this one. I will give you a new heart and put a in you. And I will remove and give you 27. The next verse. And I will put my... You see that that one is capital S? What does that mean? The Holy Spirit was already at work even in the Old Testament. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my... Now, director come. Now, when director got born again, God has set standards for all of us. It is in his decrees and in his laws. Absolute chastity outside marriage. Absolute fidelity in marriage. And they say that I will give you a new spirit. I will take that heart of stone. The new spirit is own regenerated spirit. I will put my spirit in you. Let's go back to that verse. Which verse was that? 
27. I'll put my spirit in you. And that spirit that comes in you, he, it is the spirit that does the lifting up. I'll put my spirit in you and move you to follow my heart decrease. So the spirit will help you to follow his decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So don't always say I'm weak to err is human. It is not to err is human, yeah. It is you. Because he has given us everything that we need to make us strong. When the spirit comes, he will do the lifting. It will move you. He will move you to be able to follow his decrees. Please say them. Now verse 28 says this. The next verse. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. 29. I will save you from all your uncleanliness because of the presence of the Spirit. So a new nature and a new spirit for us to be able to conquer evil. The second thing that he has made available for us is new power. New power. As chapter 1 verse 8, and he shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This Holy Spirit power, it is not only for casting demons. It is for overcoming sin in the world. It is for overcoming sin in the world. When you are not able to deal with the sin on your inside, how can you go and cast somebody's demon? New power. So nurture it. But the third one is for you to use. It, it helps. That one is self-control. Self-control is what you would do to activate this two. Knowing that these two are in you. There's a new nature. But you still have the flesh, so there will be temptation. New power that is able to deal with the temptation. But the temptation will still come anyway. Jesus Christ was tempted at all points, yet without sin. So when the temptation comes, it is for you to use this one. Self-control is the ability to say no to yourself. First Thessalonians 4, from verse 3. From verse 3. 1 Thessalonians 4 from verse 3. I'm just trying to bring the curtains down and I'm, I want you to take this one very seriously. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. That you should avoid sexual, what? Immorality. Let's read verse 4. Ready, go. No, I want you to read. Read it well. Read with vigor. Ready, go. Verse 4. That, how many of us how many of us? Let's read again. That each of you to control your own, your own, in a way that is what? Holy and honor. Each of us. You should learn how to control your own body. Don't let somebody control your body for you. Control it. When this young man is holding some sensitive place, don't say, oh, brother, brother. Don't say, oh, elder, elder. It's Control your body in a way that is holy and honorable. Each of you learn how to control your body. Not in what? Verse 5. Not in passionate lust like the pagans or the heathen who do not know God. You know God. Don't behave like them. Who do, who do not know God. Verse 6. And that in this matter, in the matter of sex and morality, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. Lift up your heads and look at me. Sometimes we, take, we wrong ourselves. In the prayer team, in the choir, in the this, in the this. And you take advantage of a sister. Take advantage of a brother. It says in this matter of sex and morality, don't wrong anyone. See ourselves as brothers and sisters. Let us live in all purity. Let's respect their bodies. And let us help them in their Christianity. But don't let us destroy one another. Each of us. In this matter. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins. Sexual immorality. As we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure. 
but you live a life of holiness or a holy life. Are we together? I'll take this last one. That is big one. There are three righteous men mentioned in scripture. First day I saw this one, I was shocked. I was really surprised. Ezekiel 14, 14. Ezekiel 14, 14. I want you to keep it in mind. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, Job, were in it. Okay, let's read 13 so that this one will make sense. Son of man, if a country sins against me, by being unfaithful and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its food supply and send famine upon it and kill its men and their animals. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save only themselves by their, declares the sovereign law. Now he picks Three people from the past generation. He says that when a nation sins against it, he wants to destroy the, the people. Even if Noah, Daniel, Job, these are people that God has selected from the past. He says, this righteous man, and I want you to add your name to be the fourth, were in it, they could save only themselves by their what? Righteousness, declares the Lord. Now, Let's look at Noah, Daniel, Job, these three men. What did they do? Genesis 6 verse 9. Genesis 6 this is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked with God. Even though the imagination and the thoughts of men in his age were evil continually. Look at him. This is what is written about him. As for Daniel, the Bible said in chapter 6 and chapter 1. In chapter 1, the Bible said he purposed in his heart. Not to defile himself. In chapter 6, the people themselves said, we cannot find anything against him. This is a man born of a woman. And people cannot find anything against him. What a righteous man. As for Job, we don't have to talk about Job. Let me read the Job's one. You see, if God himself will call Satan and say, Satan, my friend, have you considered him? There is no one on earth like him. God is bragging in Job and his righteousness. But let's listen to Job himself. 27 verse 3 and 4. Job 27, 3 and 4. Job 27, 3 and 4. As long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, verse 4. This is Job. My lips will not speak wickedness and my tongue will not utter deceit. Look at him. As long as I'm alive, this my lips will not utter wickedness. My tongue will not lie. Ever. Job 31 verse 1. This one is more popular. 31 1. This one is very popular. I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a woman, a lady, or a girl. He sat down with, and then told his eyes, my eyes, you are for me. From today onwards, between me and you, we are making an agreement. You are not going to look at a woman lustfully. Let me bring out two things that was common with the three people. Number one, they drew a line of 
resistance. They drew a line of resistance. They marked and said, I will not cross this line. I have purpose in my heart. Even though everyone is evil, I know I will remain with the Lord. They drew the line of resistance. The second one, they disciplined their appetite. They disciplined their appetite. Their sexual appetite. The eyes. They disciplined it. I have decided to advise my tongue that as long as I am alive, that is Job, this tongue of mine will not speak any deceit, will never lie, will not speak evil about anyone. He drew, he disciplined his appetite. He, they drew lines of resistance. Daniel said, this food of the king is tantalizing. I wish I could eat from the book at Nazar's table. But, no, I have purpose in my heart. He had appetite, but he disciplined his appetite. Sexual appetite has to be disciplined. Because sex is food. You have to discipline your appetite. Brothers and sisters, I'm thinking about the possessing the nation's agenda. We need holy vessels that will carry the holy God. And we are hoping in you to help lead the agenda. John Wesley said, Give me hundred people who fear nothing but sin and, they love, and love God and I'll change the world. Give me pensa people who love God and fear nothing but sin and we will change this nation. May the good Lord be with us. May he pick in us that we will stand up there for Christ and serving with all holiness in our life. God bless us all.